Hey everybody and welcome to the Kurt Johansson Show. It's Kurt. Today got another special guest, somebody that I first came across in the GWF Light Heavyweight World Cup Tournament of 2020. He is from Sweden but billed as the Turkish assassin, Ender Kara. Ender, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. No, really excited. Um, glad we've been able to arrange some dates together and get this sorted. I know you've got some exciting stuff currently going on despite yeah. the pandemic, so that'll be good to really talk about. But, yeah, hopefully just learn, like, why you're in professional wrestling, how you got into it, and hopefully showcase, like, what Scandinavian wrestling is all about. Yeah. So, let's get straight to it. Like, why professional wrestling? Like, what... What was your first memory of where you fell in love with it? And then why did you think, you know what, I'm going to make a living out of this? Uh, the first thing I ever saw, I remember, it wasn't even a match. It was a segment with uh, yeah. Randy Orton, Bob Orton, okay. and The Undertaker in 05. Wow. Yeah. And um, I remember Randy Orton and Bob Orton were talking so much crap, you know, so much shit. And then Undertaker yeah. disappeared, and I was hooked. And then I uh, <laughs> did my research basically on it, and uh, I found out I found Rey Mysterio, yeah, uh, Eddie Guerrero, and I saw their matches. And ever since that, I was very like hooked for real, and decided that this is 100 percent what I want to do. Wow! So what was it about that initial segment then with obviously Randy, his dad, um, Cowboy Bob, and the Undertaker? Like, what was it that? caught your attention and made it where you thought you know what I need to check more of this out The Undertaker when he appeared because the lights yeah. went out and he's you know the bell and his theme song yeah. just went on and then he just appeared and I remember I shit my pants almost like I was a child I was 8 <laughs> years old at this time so wow. I saw that and you know I wanted to see more of him so from there I did my research and uh, yeah that's pretty much how everything started and from there I just you know, try to follow it as much as possible. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there's no surprise when you came across the likes of Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero that um, right. you enjoyed those. Like, they're two of the greatest to ever do it. But what was it about them when you've done your research and saw them that you thought, oh, actually, like, yes, this is something I can do and this is something that I love? Um, It's more about, like, his size because I was a small kid too. Yeah. Like I'm, I, I was very small. I'm still very small, obviously, but uh, the way he would get sympathy from the crowd and the way he would execute his moves, yeah. I remember just being, you know, too like very fascinated with it and very curious to find out more. And uh, yeah, pretty much, it's pretty much every everything he did in the ring really had my attention. Yeah. So, like, how old was you when you started training, and how did that come to be? Like, what was your first like awareness that there's professional wrestling training local in uh, Sweden. Uh, so I uh, did my re research obviously because you know I wanted I knew I want I always knew I wanted to be 
doing wrestling yeah and started so i did my research and at a younger age i don't remember exactly what age that was but i found out there was this promotion in stockholm called stockholm wrestling yeah. who uh, started up in 2010 and then i simply just had that promotion in the back of my mind and uh continued with my life basically and then um i remember i was like all the way up till 19 or something i was just i don't know just miserable really because I didn't really have that hobby nor the happiness in my life, yeah. basically. So I had this job right after I graduated high school and basically worked for free. Pretty, yeah. like, if pretty much I, I never got paid for that job for maybe four months or something. It was a sales executive job. Okay. And uh, I remember uh, I was thinking to myself, I'm too miserable. And, you know, why, why the fuck shouldn't I be happy, you know? Yeah. Should just, you know. Why does anyone's opinion really matter? It's more about me, you know. I have to focus on myself. So I decided that week that I was, if this job doesn't go my way, I'm simply just going to start wrestling and dedicate my life to it. And the following week, uh, the, <laughs> the boss brought everyone, every colleague in, and he was yeah. like, we have no money. And simply, rip, like, basically, he ripped up the contract we had with him. Oh, so, wow. And then... After, right after that happened, I DM'd the Stockholm Wrestling's Instagram, yeah. told them, you know, it was a long story, whatever, I wanted to be, be training. And they welcomed me to train. And uh, th uh, yeah, that's how it really started. I did everything just like that because I was like, if this fucks up, I'm just going to do whatever I want. And yeah. that's exactly what I did. Now, it's a, it's a healthy mindset to have. I am. So many people will be in jobs they don't want and right. maybe have career aspects or like even like just life where they have aspirations but they're too worried about what people may think and oh you shouldn't be doing yeah. that because we get brought up in a civilization where people expect you to get a job by a certain age and marriage yeah. by a certain and yeah everything has to be structured and why can't you make your own path why does it have to be the same as everybody else yeah yeah. What was what was your family's reaction then? Because you mentioned um, <laughs> you you didn't care what people think. Now you just want to do right. what makes you happy. <laughs> yeah, coming from a Turkish family, Turkish yeah. people who can who who eventually will listen to this can definitely relate that I didn't have the uh, like uh, I didn't have the backup that I needed. Basically, yeah, uh, it was more like my own thing. If that makes sense, uh, yeah. not so much support was ever given until later uh but um at that time i didn't talk too much about it and they didn't know a lot about it until i started to do matches and stuff yeah. that's when they really realized that oh wow he's actually doing something and you know they're like no that's too dangerous you can't do that you just <laughs> get a regular job stuff like that you know and my parents are very overprotective bless yeah. them but uh this is what makes me happy, you know, and in my, like my eyes, it's simply, it's like my therapy. If that yeah. makes sense. Uh, it's my way of, uh, getting out the emotions and go to this different world, feel the adrenaline and, you know, just live life to its fullest, honestly, because that's how it feels whenever I'm in the ring. And, oh, uh, yeah, that's it's my passion. Yeah. Um, have they seen you wrestle live? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't even want to count that one time my dad just showed up at a small show yeah. and ruined everything. Uh, <laughs> this one time uh, I had this match in this, like a smaller youth show basically yeah. for families and such. And he just sat in the crowd and I didn't even know he's going to appear. So as I do my entrance, I see him sitting there and I'm yeah. like, like, I couldn't believe it and I hated it because it ruined the entire match because I was too focused on him yeah. because I was taking the heat. Like I was getting beat up basically. And, uh, I lost the match and I knew he was going to be furious because I put myself in danger and such. But ever since that day, I've told him like, I'm not gonna, you know, allow you guys to wrestle or uh, see me wrestle, uh, unless it's on a, you know, big stage, yeah. uh, which I will earn eventually. Yeah. So yeah, for now, no, they haven't seen me wrestle. They've seen highlight videos and such, but never yeah. seen me live. So are they supportive now then that they've seen you? Obviously, you've wrestled 
um, in Scotland, uh, in Sweden, sorry, and right. you've had Denmark, you've had Germany, you've had over here in the UK. So yeah. the fact that they've seen you travel Europe doing um, the thing that you love, making a living right. from this, it, what's their perception of it all now? Right now, it's more like they realize it's my passion. It's like yeah. that I've, ever since I started, I've dedicated my life to it because they know it's my dream. And we have had these conversations too many times, you know. Yeah about it as well because you know they keep going on with the just get a you know regular job and do this as a hobby <laughs> there's no such thing for me because this yeah. is uh, like everything i do in my life is related related to this i don't do anything else if it's not got to do with pro wrestling if i work i save up to invest in myself in wrestling if i yeah. uh watch a movie like even if i watch a movie like i will try to come up with ideas from the movie that i can use in the ring or for my character or whatever everything i do like it's my it's my passion it really is and i can't stop thinking about it it's just 24 7 about that <laughs> now i can tell through the way you're talking that it is it is your passion and um yeah. li likewise like everything is wrestling related and that at the moment like i try and right. work my life around my interviews <laughs> essentially um right it drives the fiance insane sometimes but um like again she's supportive through it um yeah did, were you born in sweden then or yeah i was yeah. born and raised in stockholm sweden have, have you ever spent any time across in turkey yeah yeah but i haven't i haven't been in turkey for maybe the past five years or something okay. like that, uh, because uh like i said like i've dedicated my you know everything to wrestling so i yeah. haven't gone to vacations with my family i've just been putting the work in you know yeah. trying to master my craft by myself and uh working 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 and you know saving up uh training gym all that i didn't have time for a vacation i've still yeah. to this day haven't really had a vacation for, for more than five years maybe yeah uh like i don't consider the trips abroad like outside uh as vacations i see that as uh, you know i'm going to work basically yeah. which is exactly what I'm doing too. So I no, can't you... take time off. I can't do yeah. it. Um, my my brother-in-law, he's Kurdish, like my my family, um, yeah. like my sister's side of the family, they're, they're Muslim, they're, they're raised mm. um, learning Turkish and Arabic. And I can see like from the way you're speaking and the passion and the drive and determination is a lot what I've seen um, from my brother-in-law when he's come over here. So yeah. it it can tell it's it's that cult the cultural like mm. thing where it is, it is your work ethic and it isn't something that um is in everybody like right you, yeah. you either have the work ethic or you don't and yeah. you've, exactly. you've clearly got that um if you don't mind me ask like are you are you practicing muslim uh no uh no. not at all no uh, are your family or yeah my family is muslim but i'm uh, uh i'd say like i'm an atheist i'd say yeah uh but it's not really a subject that I really tend to talk about, really. But that's how I feel about it, really. Okay. I don't consider myself as a Muslim, yeah. uh, even though like I don't eat pork because I haven't done that in my entire life. So yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna make that a habit. Simply, that's it. But uh, other than that, I don't pray or believe in anything. You know, that's yeah. about it. No, oh, okay. Um, hope you don't mind me asking that, by the way. It's, no, I don't mind that, um, man. Like I'm open to pretty much anything. Yeah, because I just want to like let people know your your background and yeah, um, sure. where, where you come from so the fact that you were born in sweden does mm -hmm. it make your family proud that you still go by the turkish assassin so you are um embracing your turkish heritage as well mm. uh yeah i'd say so because uh yeah my father's side is mostly turkish and you know not so much uh swedish at all uh yeah. so yeah they they really appreciate that too but the way i see it is like uh, I know there's, like, there's. I wouldn't say there is one, but there kind of is, like a small, small, small wrestling scene in Turkey. Yeah. Uh, they're simply not, you know, trained properly and all that, but they still wrestle because they love it and they have yeah. like small shows and all that. I kind of see myself as a, like like an ambassador for Turkey as well. Like I'm yeah. not only representing Sweden uh, in the pro wrestling world, but I'm representing Turkey as well yeah. because um, there's so many stories about the Swedish wrestling scene. Uh, that are mostly unfortunately negative and all but uh i remember the turkish scene always had my back as soon as they he heard about me yeah so like i feel like it's my responsibility to you know get them with me on this journey 
uh, and that's yeah, that's simply the way I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it would it would be weird to call myself. I think it would be weird to call myself the Swedish assassin too. Like when I look like I do and all that, you can tell I have Turkish roots and all. So yeah. it also makes sense, you know. <laughs> now I, I I like it. I like the fact that you're embracing both, and yeah. um, I think it's like you said, you're an ambassador for um, the representation of Turkey within professional wrestling, and absolutely is that, is that something that's on your bucket list then i know you mentioned turkey's got a very very limited and small turkish team but yeah. just to say especially to, to your father and like to, to your family that i've wrestled in turkey yeah that's the goal for sure man uh yeah 100 percent. i also like one of the things that's on my bucket list too is to bring pro wrestling to turkey too yeah because i feel like they're pa- like if people would see their passion they're simply undeniable and they deserve it and they've earned it that's the way I see it. Yeah. So I want to bring pro wrestling to Turkey too. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, like uh, we're talking either shows or even schools, whatever, you know. I uh, I would even, you know, travel there to do seminars and such. I wouldn't mind at all. Like I just want to, you know, give them or I want them to, you know, uh, get the attention that they deserve, they deserve basically. Yeah. 100%. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. No. Oh, definitely. Um and again, it's it's great to see that despite being at the beginning of your career and at such a young age, um, right. you still want to give. And yep. that is a refreshing thing. It isn't just focusing on yourself, um, which is good. So going back to the beginning then, like you've right. been watching wrestling on TV. You yep. found the Stockholm Wrestling Training School and you've gone there. So what was your first like, re- what was your first experience like training and your um, first impression of it? Uh, first impression, I remember, uh, the day I walked into that facility and I saw the ring for the first time. Uh, I remember I was glued into it and, you know, got changed real quick. I was the first guy in, last guy out. Um, I remember, uh, there were loose ropes and this is such a shitty ring, man. But in my, that was like a dream come true to me. Yeah. So I got in there and, you know, tried to run the ropes and, you know, never done them properly. And then I (laughs) tried to take a bump and I whiplashed and I was like, all right, I'll just wait for I'll just wait for everyone else, you know, that's what I thought. And when I did, uh, and we went through, you know, the basics and all that, everything seemed easier to me than others because I've, you know, I'd been studying it for so long too. Yeah. So uh, everything just came easier to me. Also, I, I was pretty athletic before that even. So, uh, yeah, I, I was training with uh, Victor Volt. His name is. Uh, okay. He 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 started training me for a bit, uh, in the start, and then obviously like uh, people who know me, they know that the majority of the time I, I had in Sweden was me being self trained. But starting yeah. out, I had Victor Wolves by my side. To this day, I have that man by my side, and he's a very very good friend of mine. Uh, but yeah, we went through all the basics and all that. It came easy to me. Uh, three months later, I had my debut <laughs> three months oh, later wow. yeah and it was a, in a tag match with him and against two others uh who were also like one veteran or so-called veteran and a trainee yeah. but yeah oh wow so what time frame was this then when you'd had that I first match? S- i started in the on the 31st of october 2016 yeah and i had my first match on the 29th of january 2017 oh wow and I remember those dates clearly in my head, obviously. So it's like yeah. very important dates to me. So I started, basically, I started on Halloween and yeah. then I made my debut three months later. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because um, I know from like different research, you'd been wrestling. Um, there was a couple of different companies in 2017, I believe, Let's Go Wrestling. And you right. also got to go to Denmark with, um, was it DPW? And DPW. It was like the, that's right. Yeah, and the um, Union of European Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much like the entire like it's, I don't even know. It's like more like a promotion based all based all over Europe, basically. So yeah. they're pretty much everywhere. But yeah. So how did it feel the fact that you started first fest of October and then yeah. um, come what it had been? Um, I think like June, July time or something like that. You're right. already going Sunday, to another. Yeah. Co- you're already going to another country to wrestle. Yeah. So the reason to why I went to Denmark is because over there, uh, 
DPW, they have this summer camp called Fake yeah. or Break. And uh, the head coaches would be Zach Gibson from NXT okay. UK and uh, Screwface Ahmed from you know, simply you know, the, in the wrestler. Yeah. And uh, so they, would, they were the head coaches over there. And DPW were, you know, responsible for that, you know, venue and the particular event, basically. Yeah. So the summer camps is like uh, seven days long, obviously. Um, training every day, uh, morning, evening, I believe it was. And then, uh, yeah, the last days there is a show, and those simple or those who participated at the camp, yeah, they may go, you know, have their matches over there. And me and one other dude from Sweden as well, uh, we were fortunate enough to wrestle Zach Gibson and yeah. uh, Screwface Ahmed. So I wrestled Screwface, and the other Swedish guy, he wrestled Zach Gibson. That's, uh, that's great. So, uh, like, um, obviously, Screwface Ahmed, for people that don't know, you've also mm-hmm. um, he's also known as uh, Jamie Ahmed. We've yeah. seen him. He had an appearance at NXT UK, and yeah. uh, very familiar with uh, Screwface. He was based predominantly at my home promotion NGW, and was one of yeah. the um, academy trainers as well. So yeah, um, I know he, some of the stars that he's brought out in England have been fantastic. A hundred percent. He's uh, he's something else, man. He's really good. And like I always give credit to them because if it wasn't for them, I would probably not be wrestling. Uh, oh, because, wow. yeah, because uh, like I said, I, unfortunately during my time in Sweden, there was mostly mostly uh, like negative things happening over there. Yeah. Uh, so basically, they they had sucked all all my passion. Yeah. Uh, we, me, and the other Swedish dude to this day, I remember we were, you know, we didn't know what we wanted to do because we felt like. Uh, the, you know the wrestling business wasn't for us because of the way it was in Sweden. But yeah. I remember uh, Zach Gibson and you know Screwface obviously like after, before and after our matches, gave, yeah. like the mo- motivation they gave us, the uh, the talks we had, you know, just you know uh, reignited the fire basically. Yeah. So I always credit them uh, whenever it's mentioned. Uh, so it was, if it wasn't for them, I would not be wrestling right now. I think. Like at Amazing. all, yeah. Uh, that, that is that is great to hear. And um, what what was it that was so bad about the wrestling in Sweden at the time? Oh, just the consistency of the politics and the toxicity, man. Like okay. it's just, it was such a toxic environment. I was told by other uh, who had been there for some quite some time to say that they said that the timing of me starting my career was a bad timing because they were not in a good place. Like any of them. Uh, yeah. You know the people within the uh, promotion and within the business overall in Sweden, uh, but you know we made it work and uh, it made me the person I am today. And yeah. That's that's a story I can talk about for hours. Uh, yeah. But I I feel like that's a different story for a different uh, time maybe. Yeah. No, that sounds fine. Um, is it got better the wrestling scene in Sweden now? Um, I'd say. We're getting there because yeah. now uh, there's five promotions in Sweden now. Okay. Well. At that time, uh, it was just four. So yeah. the fifth one, the latest one, is called Freedom Pro Wrestling, which is um, a promotion based in Stockholm as well. Yeah. Um, that is run by um, people who actually want the business to grow in Sweden and yeah. actually wants to have great matches, have a good environment, have, you know, be friends with everyone, not hate each other. And yeah. hate is such a strong word too, but they were actually hating each other. And right now, I feel like with the Freedom Promotion, uh, or Freedom Freedom Pro, I feel like um, we're on a good way there to get, you know, to get good, good vibes, basically, yeah. in the Swedish wrestling scene. Because we're bringing in the best talent in the Nordic region as well. We bring in uh, wrestlers from Finland, who I personally believe are truly underrated. We're yeah. bringing in people from Denmark as well, who I who also like are you know very underrated as well, and you know we just, this is simply like a platform for um, people we truly feel like has earned you know their um, their chance you know if yeah. that makes sense. No, hundred percent, and it's I think the name is fitting from what you mentioned were <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the politics and it you right. felt probably a bit held back, and now it's freedom. It's it's 
you can expect what's in the title and um right. i'll definitely have to check them out like obviously absolutely this, this interview with yourself is the one that's kick-starting my look into the scandinavian wrestling scene I I've, see. Been, okay. I've been doing a lot of the southeast asia of china mm. philippines singapore malaysia but now yeah I'm focusing on like Sweden. Um, I've got a couple in Denmark that I'm having a look at and uh, Finnish Would that be wrestler. Body Slam and Copenhagen Championship Wrestling. Perhaps. Yes, they're the two and DPW right. as well. Yeah, DPW as well. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Yeah. So I highly yeah. recommend uh, FCF Wrestling as well, which is Fight Club Finland. Okay. There are I'll, yeah. I'll definitely as well. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll definitely. Oh, thank you. Um, but so. Going, going back to it, like um, before we move on to like the latter stages of your career, what yeah. was it about Screwface and uh, Zach Gibson that? What did they teach you, and what did? Why was it that you thought you know what wrestling is for me when you was kind of at your wit's end of it? When they revealed uh, how how much of like how much we had done in such a short period of time, really, yeah. like just motivating they're like when i was this many months in i couldn't do this and this and this but you guys you're on a different level and all that you know stuff like that just mo motivating words really yeah. really enc encouraging us during training as well you know if we mess up we go back to it and we do it again and again and again until we get it done and when you get it done you know it's like it's feeling of accomplishment especially yeah. like we, around those guys because we like fuck they're you know <laughs> they're great you know yeah. Um, that was really like at that time very um, indescribable really because you know it really did reignite everything in my yeah. opinion I'm, I'm just speaking for myself I don't know about the other guy but that was that's how it felt for me no, uh, but it, yeah it is, it is great to hear and obviously as your career progressed um, you did another one of the um, like the union stuff um, in 2018 right. but Shortly after you came to the UK for the first time, yeah, um, wrestling for was it was it only Battle Pro? Uh, no, no, no. Battle Pro was, I believe, it was my UK debut. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't based in the UK at that time. Yeah. Um, so I did Battle Pro and I did a scramble match, and yeah. then I remember I get I returned to Sweden, and then um, I uh, went back to the Nakalak School for a seminar yeah. and. From there, I made, you know, friends over there. And I was like, this is where I got to be because, you know, it's positive over here. And I feel like, you know, I, I, I got to surround myself with people who has a very alike mindset. You know, get to surround yourself with people with a similar mindset to yours. So that's what I thought. That's why yeah. I thought, like, UK was the place to be because I was feeling, you know, safe, basically, over there. Yeah. So I went back home and uh, I finished uh the bookings in sweden and did a death match and whatever and uh i uh explained myself to the bot like the big boss who was drunk at that time yeah and uh basically handed in my gear and um uh, told him i can't predict the future but this is what's best for me i thank you for the opportunities and all that you know all that stuff and yeah. um yeah, eventually after that, right after that, I remember I was kicked out from the training groups and all that, and the other inter internal groups as well. I was like, wow, okay, that's fine because I guess it's meant to be. Uh, so, I, and then before I went to the UK, I had a match in Finland, who yeah. um, probably is the most, not the best match in my career, but maybe the most meaningful one because uh, apparently that was like a contender for match of the year over there. And, oh, wow. uh, after that match, I remember the crowd chanting my name for a very long time and, you know, begging uh, fin uh, FCF to bring me back and yeah. stuff like that. And, you know, I, at that time, I, I sat on the apron right after the match in a losing effort, but I sat there and I remember I started crying, man, because I was like, I guess I did the right, right choice. And yeah. a month or two after that, I decided on two weeks' notice that I was going to head to the UK. Well, and I stayed exactly. there for, yeah, and I stayed there for a total of six months on two weeks' notice. <laughs> <laughs> I, Out I, of nowhere. I like it. I, like it. Um, I feel yeah. sorry for those in Finland, then, if you are one of the matches of the year contender, because um, the show that you was on about, I believe it was FCF, um, it was their New Year edition of Side yeah. Show. So, yeah, it's a small um, show, 5th too. Of Jan 5th of January, and you've set the standard for the rest of the year. 
<laughs> it was such a long time ago too. I wonder what I would do if I were there now because at that time I, man, like I improve for every match I go and every yeah. day that goes by I improve. Like, no question about it. And I just wonder what would happen if I were in that ring today. You know, that was such a long time ago. Yeah. Hopefully it will be something that will happen again in the I'm, near future. Yeah. I'm very hopeful too. So what was your first impression of a British wrestling crowd when you came to Battle Pro then? Loud. <laughs> <laughs> they're loud. We're, we're alive. They're, they're really, they really are a part of the show. I really enjoyed it. But uh, I, I really enjoyed it more over at Kamikaze Pro, where I basically was based in, uh, when I was living in the, uh, Wolves or yeah. the Birmingham area, basically. Uh, but I remember Kamikaze. Always, I, I believe that Kamikaze is probably one of the best crowds I've ever wrestled in front of. Oh, that's amazing. And, yeah, because they're really a part of the show and they're really you know, taking part in it too, uh, yeah. chanting your... Uh, you know, you know your nickname, your name, and all that. You know, in different. I believe it's like football chants. I, yes. I have no clue. I wouldn't know because I don't yeah, watch but... it. But football <laughs> chants. So we, we just we just make things up and we think of. It won't even be a just a football chant all the time. It might be. Yeah. There's a song that mm. might work with their name, and you just try it and see if it works. And if it sticks, yeah. it sticks. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's perfect. Uh, I remember I had the. Um, Oh, Turkish assassin, you know, yeah. and um, the uh, uh, da, 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 and their car. Yeah. Oh, da, da, da. That's what, yeah, those are good da, ones, man. Da, like, da, I get da, da. goosebumps, yeah, <laughs> goosebumps all over. Like, whenever they would do that, like, I couldn't believe that people would actually chant for me, you know. God forbid I had fans, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> but but yeah, I was like very uh, impressed by that. So, yeah, oh, wow. UK crowd, very, very nice. I liked it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, obviously with one of your matches against, uh, you had like you wrestled for Saul as well. You had the match with OJ. Yeah, that's um, right. When you're thinking back to those matches with uh, Kamikaze, yeah, what match stands out for you? a hundred percent, it would be me against K. Jutler. Yeah, uh, I remember that. That was my main roster debut as well, oh, wow. and. Um, yeah, that match was um, a really fun one, even though I almost broke my neck two, two or three times. But uh, Jeez. yeah, it was it was something else, man. It was truly an experience. And um, K being the professional he is, just, just had fun with it, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, I could wrestle that man f- f- every day for, for years. I, like, <laughs> he's so, so good, man. So underrated, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, hopefully, like, again, when wrestling goes back to some normality yeah. um you will come over here because obviously 2019 that time in the uk um mm. and starting off with finland that has to be your biggest year to date um essentially with not only was you in england but you was going back and forth to denmark a lot yeah. more yeah. frequently with um copenhagen so ccw mm-hmm. what was mm-hmm. that like what was your time in denmark more reoccurring with ccw like CCW man, it's like my second home. Like um, I can't say good. Like there's only I can only say good things about that promotion yeah. and those people within it. Um, they really um, saw something in me and they really gave me a platform to showcase something I already I already known for many many months. Um, yeah. And the fact that they saw my hard work and they truly believed that. I, had earned a spot in their roster and on their shows. Yeah. Uh, man, it's unforgettable. I even won my first title over there too. Uh, the DPW light heavyweight yeah. championship. I won over there. Um, uh, yeah, man, the people within it is just truly professional in my opinion. You can say whatever you want, man, but that play, that place, man, is, um, it's, a, it's a rare, it's a really rare to find something like that. Um, especially considering what I've seen and what I've been, what I've been through, like, yeah. those guys really, you know, they um, helped me out a lot. Let's say that really did help me a lot, both professionally and mentally. You know, it's just yeah. can't thank them enough. And I will, you know, always be like, I will always be in depth for that, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, so, that, that's that's great to hear. Like, how yeah, how does it work in um, 
Denmark thing because obviously he's working for CCW, but right. I know they do some cross stuff with DPW, and that's why right. you uh, be Fat Paul was it for the um, like heavyweight <laughs> title? Yeah, yeah. What I, a uh, name, uh, Fat Paul. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I ended that guy's career, man. I'm glad I did that for his <laughs> for his sake, and you know, for Danish pro wrestling, the Danish pro wrestling scene as well. Like I got, yeah, I got him out of there. <laughs> but yeah, I've simply worked. I, I worked for CCW, DPW, but still to this day haven't been in a body slam ring, um, the body slam pro wrestling. And yeah, that's something I got to get on my bucket list, man. Got to get off. What know, is it about get... body slam that makes you want to go there? Uh, just the, um, I'd say the roster really is intriguing to look at. I'm, I'm, I uh, like I said, like everything I think about is pro wrestling. So I imagine yeah. myself and you know facing off against one of the like someone in their roster, or you know what we could do and like uh, what what a spectacular match we could put on and all that. Also, like I know um, many of the, my friends who in CCW as well. I know they've yeah. been working for Body Slam recently, and that means it's a good place to be. Basically, you know, it's like so. Yeah, it's real. Um, there were some talks before, but, you know, COVID happened and they had issues yeah. with venues and all that. But one day, surely I will be there, I feel like. Is there anybody in particular then when you are thinking about, oh, I could do this with them, I could do that with them? Ah, uh, man. Yeah, I think I could do something because they bring international talent too. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind going against international talent either. Uh, but I feel like, you know, their, their current champion and uh, and uh, Peter Alexander, I believe yeah. it is, and Michael Finn, maybe Emeritus. It's just I c- like I don't mind going against. I can go against anybody. I wouldn't mind at all. I say that like to almost every promotion. Like I'll um, I'll go against anybody. You know. Yeah. I truly feel like I can get the best out of someone uh, in like any match. You know, any opponent, I can get the best out of someone because. But truly um, separates me from other people is my spirit, my heart in the ring, I believe, my determination and my, uh, yeah, like the spirit I show in the matches, the fighting spirit simply. Yeah. And yeah, the competition well, like, I bring. I'll have to definitely mention it. Like I mentioned earlier, I've got Body Slam coming on the show, but I've also got Peter mm-hmm. Alessander. Um, yeah. he's going to be coming on the show in the future. So I'm like, look, very cool. And the car, he likes your title. He wants to be, he wants to make <laughs> that happen. Champion um, against champion. Let's do it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah. so like closing off, I believe, um, 2020 for yourself before the yeah. pandemic hit. And again, I mentioned at the start of what well, the opening of the interview, um, first time that I came across yourself was with GWF, uh, for their light heavyweight world cup tournament, which, yes sees some of the best light heavyweight talent across Europe. Right. What was that like for you when, like, how did that happen when you got the call from German Wrestling Federation that the one you're part of such a tournament? Oh, man, that was, getting that mail was truly a dream country because I honestly didn't think that would happen, you know, because they, I remember they sent out a tweet. They're yeah. like, who, who are the best uh, light heavyweights in Europe that hasn't wrestled for GWF? And I re- quoted that tweet and said, me, that's it. Yeah. And then I remember um, I have a good friend over there. I touch Bahar over there as well. Okay, yeah. And I believe he put in a good, good word for me as well. But then I talked to one of the promoters over there and just like that, boom, out of nowhere, he's like, here's your ticket. I was like, wow, cool. You know, and I did, I realized how big of an opportunity that was. But yeah. I truly feel like I, um, I didn't do too well over there, uh, which also that match with Sensa Volto, I feel like was a w- wake up call to me. Okay. And uh, because um, number one, I lost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number two, I feel I truly feel like I didn't uh, live up to the expect- expectations. And num- number three, like I expected more from me. If let's say that uh, I expected more effort from me uh, yeah. in that match. Um, but you know, having that match was a wake up call and maybe it was the best thing that could ever happen to me. And, uh, that was in, I believe March. And before March I had planned like what I wanted to do for the year. 
before the yeah. pandemic hit, obviously. So number, plan A was Japan, plan B was Germany, and plan C was England again. Yeah. Um, so obviously Corona happened and they closed the borders in Japan, so plan A couldn't work, so Germany <laughs> it was. So I decided that before I get to the light heavyweight World Cup, I'm going to head to the WXW Academy yeah. and uh, train there for a week, head back home, and then one week later to Berlin. You yeah. know? And that's exactly what I did. Um, but yeah, I believe yeah, that, was, that was my latest match this year. Yeah. And coming back to WXW Academy after Japan still had their borders closed and being away for five months, I've, I've, I've never taken a break of that. Like from the ring, I've never taken a break of five months ever, like not, yeah. not even a month probably ever since I started. Uh, so getting back into the ring, I train two times a day, six days a week, uh, nonstop, you know, just wow. putting in the work, you know just i'm just obsessed you know um people keep, keep telling me like you're so talented and you're, but i'm i really feel like i'm not talented at all like i just feel like i'm just obsessed with it that's it i'm just obsessed i'm not talented i'm just obsessed you definitely uh, you're definitely talented but i think the obsession can yes. be a good <laughs> um can be a good thing like right. because you see so many people where they might get on a couple of shows and think right i don't need to train now this is and they just plateau, but this, despite getting these opportunities, you, yeah. you came to England. You've you've been yeah. in Germany, and yeah. um, it's good to see that you're still trying to go to different places to hone your craft because it will make 100%. you ultimately a lot better. Hundred percent, especially after England too, because yeah. um, the way I see, I failed in England. That's how I see it. I failed. Um, I didn't reach any of my goals while while during my time over there. My goals were to either wrestle for uh, Revolution Pro Wrestling, yeah, Progress Wrestling, or Fight Club Pro, and I did none of those things. I was okay. just, you know, crewing, ring crew, basically. And um, but failing over there and coming back to Sweden, you know, feeling the way I was feeling because I couldn't stay for much longer uh, yeah. due to financial reasons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I f I saw that as a stepping stone. Yeah, uh, because failure, like, the way I see it, like failure is like a stepping stone, and since like it's an experience that lends to wisdom that yeah. ultimately makes you like you know a stronger version of yourself. That's how I saw it, and uh, yeah, that's truly how I saw it. And you know, I couldn't stop there. I had to keep working. Basically, that's how I saw it. Yeah, who, like, was you training while she was in England? Like, who was it that was training you? Uh, Pete Dunn. Pete. And um, Pete Dunn was a trainer at Fight Club Pro. Yeah. And, uh, and then we had um, Marshall and Kamikaze. Yeah. Um, Mar yeah, Marshall. And then, yeah. there Obviously, there were some people within Fight Club Pro who were also part of, you know, my training over there, but due to the speaking out movement, I would not like to <laughs> no, I'm, uh, yeah. give them any type of recognition nor pla like a platform at all. So I'm not going to mention their names, no, but yeah, Pete, Pete Dunn was in there, man. Yeah. No, brilliant. So, um, you're at the WXW Academy. Like how long have you been there at the moment then? It's been two weeks now. Two uh, weeks. I've got two weeks left. So uh, I'm saying for a month in total. Yeah. And, um, there's things I can I can't comment on right now that yeah. I've done here, uh, but um, it's crazy. Like we're living in crazy times, man. It's crazy. Uh, done very exciting stuff, and um, yeah, basically just looking forward to the future now. But yeah. the time over here, man, I love it. Um, got everything I need. Great people, great environment. No, no you know, no bullshit. Yeah. No bullshit at all. No drama. It's just, you know, just good vibes, people motivating each other and, you know, bringing the be best out of each other. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah. And um, I'm fortunate enough to have roommates that have a similar mindset, too. So, uh, oh, yeah. Um, are you able to say who you've been training with? Uh, in WXW? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Avalanche, the head coach of it. Okay, yeah. And uh, the rotation. Okay. Yeah. Um, what is it about German wrestling that 
made you think I want to go there to train? Uh, first of all, the experience in February when I was staying here for one week yeah. and I realized how good of an environment that it was over here. Because uh, I always try to compare it to other places I've already been in. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that first week I remember I was like, I knew I was going to come back one day uh, and for a longer time. Because over here, you know, got everything I need over here, man. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But they're basically in their own world almost. Like, uh, they do tours and all that. Obviously not now. Yeah. Not such. But, like, they, that week, that we would do tours around Germany and uh, GWF. Like, if yeah. you look at their, you know, the content they have, man, it's, and the talent they bring in, they're, they're in a different world over here. Like, it's like in their, they're in their own bubble almost. Yeah. No, I 100% agree with that. And um, mm. before we get on to one of your goals as well, like we did yeah. have a tweet on um, that's just come through actually from the post that was interviewing. And so I'll give him a shout out. It's Raspy the Wannabe at the Rasp and Only. You put the boy. I'm absolutely useless when it comes to questions, but I'm hyped. <laughs> Kara seems like one of the coolest and most talented guys in Scandinavian scene Obsessed. from everything I've seen. Obsessed guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 100% listen to this uh, interview once it's out. So yeah, Raspi, thank you for that. And Thank you, Raspi. Um, but see, one of the most talented, like don't under, don't sell yourself short saying it's just <sighs> an obsession. Like the ta I'm, the talent I'm not good with there. compliments, man. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not good with them at all. I can't take them. I don't know how to react to them almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. But that's just how, who I am, you know. Yeah. I can't. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so moving on then. <laughs> yeah. So on. you mentioned goal number one was Japan. So 100%. Yeah. what is it about Japan um, that makes you want to go there? And what is it just Japan in general? Or is there a specific company you want to go with? Oh, man. That's a big subject, man. I can talk <laughs> about Japan for hours. Um, Japan has always, I've always been fascinated by Japan, even at a younger age when I didn't even know wrestling existed over there. Yeah. Um, man, just caught my eye and I never in, really took my eyes off it. But, um, Japan, man, I'm dreaming of that every day of my life, man. It's crazy. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, fuck. It's, um, uh, such a big subject i don't even know where to start man but <laughs> like the way i see it over there wrestling like my style is uh m many will say that's very japanese style you know with the okay. fighting spirit and yeah and me being kick oriented because my taekwondo background and me being a taekwondo black belt yeah. and all that and uh, it, simply the way i wrestle just screams japan according yeah. to people and um over there the respect they have for it man the the fact that they see it as a, as a, as a sport yes and uh you know the audience being respectful and you know uh the way they react to certain things and you know they're not you know loud and you know um drunk or something you know? <laughs> like yeah. not violent or anything like that just very respectful such a respectful culture everything about japan i love man it's unbelievable yeah. um I don't know, but as for like wrestling over there, man, I have so many friends right there, uh, right now over there because yeah. I um, met plenty of Japanese wrestlers through my time in Fight Club. Uh, like we're talking Meiko Satomura, Shigeru yeah. Iri, uh, Dash, Chihori Hashimoto, just so many names, man, and um, Mao especially as well. Uh, but me having friends over there now and you know seeing what they're doing over there. Uh, I could wrestle, like, my goals, my the promotions I'm looking forward to, obviously. The reason to why I call myself, or I I'm call myself, like, the self-proclaimed crown prince, the yeah. way I see it is, like, crown prince is simply someone who's destined for the throne. Yeah. And uh, the, in, my, in my eyes, from my lens, it's the throne of the junior heavyweights. So okay. uh, my goal is to either hold the G8, uh, GHC, junior yeah. heavyweight championship or the IWGP junior heavyweight championship. And okay. I truly, truly, truly believe that one day I will be there and truly want, like one day I will hold either title or maybe both. Who knows? Um, I can't, that's why also, that's also why I study Japanese in my free time because I yeah. know that's where I'm going to end up. Um, 
I have not. I don't have much of an much much of an interest in America or anything. Yeah. It's more about Japan for me. I don't do it for the money, man. I do it for the passion and the love I have for yeah. the sport, and that's what I mean by the sport. And that over there, it's a sport. So definitely, yeah. and once it's again, big... it's, it's showing that that work ethic that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. The fact you're already trying to learn on working with Japanese, yeah. like. Would you be happy with taking like one of the young line routes where um, yeah. you're starting back from the beginning, you may not wrestle mm. for the first few months and yeah. build yourself up? Is that something you'd be happy to take with Nora New Japan? I would I would be down to do that, yeah. I, that was like one of the goals as well when I was at the New Japan LA Dojo. Yeah. Um I she I remember Shibata san like he really praised me for my spirit over there because you know there were some big guys over there, and I'm you know this, I'm five seven, I'm a small, ch- yeah. very small basically, but the spirit I showed like really was uh, compared to others like you know much bigger because like when we wrestled the young lions over there, and nobody would step up other than me, that said a lot you know, <laughs> and um, even though I failed, I got back up and back up and back up you know. Yeah it didn't matter but yeah like I, I would be down to take a young lion road as well i wouldn't mind at all i feel like that would be not only a uh, like good experience for me as a wrestler but as a person too like really trying to find myself because to this day i'm trying to find myself yeah i truly believe i haven't done that yet um so yeah it will be I, it will simply be something part of the journey i think yeah I didn't realize you'd been with the LA Dojo. Um, oh, <laughs> like how long was you out there for? Um, I was there for a total of six days, but uh, yeah. the training was for three days, and three days I was simply just in LA taking it easy, you know. Three uh, days training, in. that yeah. environment is like three months training. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. I had prepared myself for it, so it was very intense, uh, like very, very intense. Yeah. But I loved every second of it, man. I, what did I, you I learn the most? Man, just more. It was over there. It's like it wasn't so much about you know particular like wrestling training in general. It was more like how bad you really want it. You know, yeah. it was more like a test almost. They try to see. They truly try to see like how bad you really want this. You know, yeah. and um, I loved every second of it. It's the best ring I've ever been in. It's the best ring I've ever run like ran in. Yeah. Ever bumped in. And every, like the environment over there, man, was uh, truly something special, and I will never forget it. It was like I, I never wanted to leave as well. I was the last guy out in the dojo on the on the last day, um, wow. talking to Shibata in Japanese, which he freaked out about. <laughs> but <laughs> I was like, please don't freak out. Like, you know, I can't. You're yeah. Shibata. I can't. <laughs> you, Shibata, son, don't freak out, man. Like, you know, like I'm just a passionate guy. You know. Yeah. There's such an aura around him. Like before he oh, yeah. um, retired, I got to meet uh, Katsuyori Shibata, Tetsuya Naito, and Jushin yeah. Thunder Liger. And just being around like those three is yeah. um, like they're so very different. And although Shibata is really mm. quiet and reserved, he's, mm. he's the epitome of Japanese wrestling for me with the respect 100%. 100%. and the seriousness. And, yeah. Um, for you to say that you've even done three days training under Shibata, that's you're yeah. already you're already winning. <laughs> yeah, it was an honor, man. It was such an honor. Yeah, couldn't I thought about that? I to this day I think about that. It's just a surreal experience. It's just you know when uh, because I've been chasing you know the Japanese you know wrestling scene you know all that you know I have my goals and all that, but. Yeah like being there for three days and I truly felt like like it was a proper dojo you know yeah. it was like I was in Japan already and it was like a dream came true it felt like I was in Japan and um but yeah man just unbelievable surreal really Sur- surreal is the world uh, yeah. is the word to use here I think no, I can, yeah I can only imagine especially when it is something you're dreaming about and you're striving for and 100%. Um, to get that taste is obviously only going to make you a little bit hunger but mm. um to wrap things up like I know some um companies are testing their shows and doing little yeah. bits and I know you still got two weeks at the right. WXW Academy so yeah um it's clear you, your goals are get to Japan do some more yeah. in Germany and England but um, yeah. Is is he anybody yeah. on the list that you want to wrestle? <laughs> Ooh, that's a big. Uh, 
Like in, in Japan or give, in Europe? Um, both, like two or three names that they're the ones that you're wanting to wrestle, say, in 2021. 2021. Uh, Ilya Dragunov. Yeah. Hiromu Takahashi. And... Uh, oh, man. Hard. It's hard. <laughs> uh, maybe... Oh, yeah. Nakajima from Noah. Yes. Yeah. No, they'd, Nakajima. They'd be, they'd be cool, man. They'd be cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so to wrap things up, like, have you got any shows that you might have been announced for coming up? Or where can people find you on social media and support the Turkish Assassin? Uh, so the plan for me uh, is to wrestle for GWF on the 17th of October in Berlin yeah. for Chaos City. And... Um, the event is called Chaos City, obviously. And yeah. um, that's pretty much um, what I've got for me right now. I have several other um, requests that we're currently working on, but we can't tell for sure right now because yeah. of my time over here and me uh, having to, you know, head back home and yeah. see what things are like over there work-wise and all that. Um, but, yeah, the plan right now is simply to, you know, uh, get back home eventually and um, save up, save up, save up and... For sure, like if Japan has their boards open by that time, head to Japan yeah. next summer or early 2021 or something. That's the goal. That's the plan. But as for social media, uh, you can find me on Endercara PW on all social media platforms. We're talking Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, yeah. No, that's yeah. amazing. Like um, to just feel like we're only doing this audio but right. i can still tell just from um the way you speak and in the tone of your voice like the passion is undeniable of yourself and it is really refreshing and uh, really great to hear it and i sincerely hope that once the borders are open that that japan that japan yeah. dream does come true for you and you're able I to so head out too, there yeah. and um i'm gonna get the early booking when you're in japan you're coming back on the show <laughs> deal that's a deal consider well, it done brother nah um again nah, thank you for that thank you really nah you're welcome it's, it's been amazing having you on the show um thank everybody you. make sure you go follow uh and on social media and follow his um run it's going to be great seeing you with gwf coming up so i'm yeah. excited to see how that plays out and maybe Me some too. more Me too. some more announcements do you know who you'll be facing yet not yet. I have no idea. We'll see what happens because the coronavirus or the coronavirus cases are racing up. So you never yeah. know what happens in Berlin. But uh, yeah, that's the scheduled uh, booking that I have. But I don't know who I'm against uh, right now. So we'll see about yeah. that. And hopefully, when whenever you do come back to the UK, we'll be able, be able to hit you up at one of the shows and um, just pick your brains again. Like just hundred percent. It's again just so passionate about the business. It's great to see. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That means a lot. Brilliant. So everybody, whilst you've been listening, hopefully you've enjoyed that interview with Ender. Make sure you go follow him on social media to follow. He's only at the start of his career. The um, yeah. the heights are, it's going to be great to see. Uh, make sure you hit like button. Make sure you hit the notifications as well. Um, and hit subscribe. As we discussed, there will be more interviews coming from the Scandinavian pro wrestling scene plus from all the different countries around the world. If you head over to my K. Johansson Twitter bio, you can see all the different interviews from different countries that I've conducted so far. And hopefully I can keep adding more flags to that bio, um, make sure that you all get to learn more about different professional wrestling scenes from around the world. And yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Hit that like button, hit subscribe. And again, make sure you follow Ender on social media. Bye for now. Anymore.